Please welcome Ducky. Hello everyone, I'm Ducky, for those that I haven't met yet and for those that are as terrible at names as I am. Uh, hopefully Ducky's pretty easy to remember. So today, uh, sorry for the technical delays, but today I'm going to talk to you about augmented reality uh, in the browser and I guess more specifically about JavaScript libraries that will help you do this because we're all here at a JavaScript conference and I figure you're probably interested in that. Um, hopefully this doesn't come as a shock for you. Uh, if this is not the topic you're here to see, there is another room. It's also an excellent room and we can still be friends even if you leave, don't worry. Uh, that applies for if you want to leave halfway through, don't worry. I'll, I'll talk to you later, we'll hang out. Um, so a bit about me, because we're friends now. Uh, I'm from the Western Island of New Zealand. Um, I work for a little web agency called Take Flight. Um, they're pretty cool. And I do that while I finish my degree. And I'm really, really interested in games. Uh, tabletop games, video games, physical games. I, I really love games. Uh, I was actually at the Game Developer Conference in San Francisco last week. That's how much I love games. Um, and that's kind of how I got into augmented reality, because games in augmented reality just sounds really fun. Like, everyone's really crazy about VR right now, virtual reality. Um, I'm also crazy about virtual reality, but I also really love AR. So, for those in the room that don't know, and that's, or maybe you're not clear on it, what is augmented reality? Well, uh, right here I have a super great dystopian example of AR, if I can get it to play. Um, so this isn't any actual like real uh, technology. This is just a, an art project by an artist called Keichi Matsuda. Um, so it's, it's a little like if AR and GeoCities met, and it's just a little crazy. Um, and if you could hear the like audio, which we won't do because that would just be complicated right now, um, it would be like telling this person what to do. So it's kind of an overlay on the real world, and it's a bit intense, and I hope AR doesn't quite take over our lives as much as this has. Uh, <laughs> so we'll, we'll quickly move on if we can. Uh, yeah. We totally did that smoothly. So uh, that wasn't entirely clear what AR is. So our good friends at Wikipedia have this excellent uh, definition for us. So augmented reality, AR, which is how I refer to it a lot, uh, is a live, direct, or indirect view of a physical real-world environment whose elements are augmented or supplemented by computer-generated sensory inputs such as sound, video, graphics, or GPS data. Simple, right? Easy. Cool. We all know what AR is. Brilliant. Uh, so there are actually some examples of AR currently in use, like in tech. Um, this is a great one. This is an application called Snapchat. Uh, I totally use it. It's, it's good fun. Um, Facebook are trying to do similar things um, as well. And basically, it uses face tracking to put over these adorable and hilarious filters. And then you can take videos or pictures and send it to your friends. Uh, so it's not a super useful thing, uh, <laughs> but it's really fun. Uh, and if you want to try it out later, I, I totally have my phone and we can, we can take some selfies together, it'll be great. Uh, <laughs> uh, another big uh, kind of augmented reality thing or thing that was sold as augmented reality was a game that came out last year and like swept a lot of the population uh, called Pokemon Go. So as you might be able to infer from the title, it's from the kind of the Pokemon franchise and it basically lets you catch Pokemon in the real world. So you would walk around with your mobile phone uh, looking for the little creatures. They're adorable. That one's pretty cute. Um, and you could actually see them like overlaid onto like a park bench and things like that. Um, as you might be able to tell on that screen there, that's not AR. So it had a little mode thing and you could turn AR off and on and <laughs> I have to say most people turned it off. So unfortunately it was a bit gimmicky but the game was really popular and people really liked playing it. Uh, hopefully some people still do. Maybe we can go for a walk later. <laughs> um, so that is one big problem with AR. It has been used as a gimmick a lot so it's used in advertising. This is from 2008. It's a mini kind of commercial. Basically you had a piece of paper, held it up to your webcam, you could see a Mini, woo, really exciting. Um, I guess if you're interested in buying a car, maybe that model is helpful. I'm not sure, I've never really bought a Mini before. 
Um, IKEA in 2013 wanted to help their users figure out how much furniture to replace, like to cover up dead bodies in their living room. So as you can see, this couch is not big enough, uh, so they might want to try out a bigger couch. Um, so I'm sure that was really helpful for consumers. Um, in 2014, Vienna wanted to test its citizens uh, and make sure that they were prepared for zombie outbreak. Um, the people in this were not prepared. They were just like, whoa. Um, it might have also been like a promotion for a TV show called The Walking Dead, but you know, it worked pretty well as a zombie outbreak crisis. Um, so those are really exciting things happening in AR right now. Uh, and there's more exciting things. So there's lots of hardware. Lots of big companies are like making more and more hardware so we can do AR better and better. So this is the HoloLens from Microsoft. I've tried it out. It's pretty cool. Lots of people complain it doesn't have the full 180 degrees of view. Uh, that's, that's a problem with AR, unfortunately. Uh, but hopefully we'll get there one day. Um, so yeah, this does VR as well as AR. And at the moment, it's actually trending for kind of enterprise spaces. So basically, you'd wear this in your office, and you could just chuck your desktop up on that wall over there and be like, cool, that's my computer now. Um, and I think they're trying to head towards like video conferencing things so you can like augment yourself into a different room on the other side of the planet, which will be really cool uh, when it happens. <laughs> Um, other things that are kind of used in conjunction with AR, this is Project Tango from Google. It helps you uh, 3D map indoor spaces with like no GPS at all, um, which will be really handy when you need to kind of pick out points and you want you like want an object in the 3D in the in your <laughs> from your computer to be there, but you don't actually have a marker for it. Um, also, Leap Motion is really cool for gestures and like interacting with objects in AR. The HoloLens uses gestures kind of like the Kinect. It's pretty much the same technology, same company. Um, so that's pretty cool. And this is like my favorite because I'm a poor student and I can afford this. It's a cardboard, basically. I already have a smartphone and I can just chuck it into this cardboard thing. It also has some lenses and I can use camera feed to like look out into the real world and like see that on my display. Um, you can also use it for VR and there are some nicer headsets out there like uh, the HTC Vive, the Rift can't really do AR because it doesn't have a camera feed on the uh, on the outside, um, but they've also got like Daydream from Google and things as well. So those are all things that you can consider trying to use with uh, the things I'm going to hopefully instill upon you. Um, but yeah, you might be wondering where where are the browsers in all this? Um, some of the examples I gave you before are kind of native-ish apps. They're not really on the browser. Um, so where can browsers and kind of JavaScript come into this? Well, first up, there are some advantages and disadvantages. So native things, yeah, they kind of, they're a bit more efficient um, and like lower latency and things like that. Sometimes they can take more battery life, which sucks. Um, but you also have more control over the permissions and things that you get from your users. Um, but browsers, and this is what I'm really excited for when I kind of learned that I could do augmented reality in the browser, um, was it's kind of more accessible to your users. So lots of people have access to a browser and a camera, and that's super awesome. I, I hate downloading apps. I, it annoys me that I have to go to a store and download the app, and it takes time, and then I use it. I love being able to already have a browser, just go into it and go to somewhere. So that's really handy. Uh, it's really great if you want to just prototype something as well, and you don't want to spend all the effort into making a native app. Um, so it's kind of less code and possibly easier to learn, and there's more standards and things that you can leverage for a wider user base. Um, there are a lot of JavaScript libraries out there. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but there's just like a bunch, and a lot of them do similar or the same things, uh, which is really cool. Like lots of options to choose from. I'm sure some do things, some things better than others, um, but oh man, there are so many. Um, so I've kind of tried to narrow it down a bit from this talk for this talk, uh, and that's kind of because I have some opinions about how I like my AR and how I think like AR can do be things better for people. I don't actually really like seeing like augmented reality for things that you don't need augmented reality for. Like you could augment a chess game if you wanted. Um, I'm sure it would be cool. Maybe if you're like on different sides of the planet, it would be cooler. But like if I'm having a, a great augmented reality chess game with like some people in the front row, we could probably just have like a chess set right here. It would be just as easy, if not easier. Um, so some of the things I look for when I'm kind of trying to choose which libraries I want to use, uh, 
Well, first, I kind of really like it on mobile because I think that's just way more accessible to users. Uh, augmented reality in a browser on a desktop, like, sure, we all have web webcams kind of built in, or we have like an extra webcam, but then it kind of limits what your users can do with it. Because, like, I, I have a webcam on the front of this, and I can kind of like pick it up and move it. And, like, this is probably not a great example because this computer can be picked up and moved. But, like, if I'm at a desktop, it's, it's got a very limited kind of range of what I can do in that space. I kind of like getting up and moving around a bit, and I think AR is really useful for that. Um, also, uh, I'm really into kind of open source and free things. <laughs> I'm a student, so anything that doesn't cost money is super great. Uh, and also, I just really uh, like the kind of open source ethos, and I really love sharing that and being able to see um, the code and see where it can be improved and contribute to that. Um, that's just something I'm really into. You might not be into it. Ho hopefully, you are. Um, and also, the age of the project. So, augmented reality is kind of... It's, it's, I don't want to say it's fast paced kind of moving technology wise, but it is like progressing more and more like a, a lot of the time. There's lots of academics working on it. Um, lots of big companies are now working on it. Um, so looking at the age of a project that you're going to use is probably a good indication as to whether it's going to be useful in the future and kind of make sure that uh, it's relevant now because there's plenty of things from like, even just a few years ago that are quite outdated now. I'm, I'm sure some of you have experienced that in lots of other areas as well. Um, so yeah, that's particularly important with augmented reality though. Um, also, licenses for projects. Because I care about open source and because I care about what my project can do and how I can distribute it, uh, licenses for whatever you're going to use are really important too. But I'm sure there are lots of talks about that, so I won't bore you. Um, so, what JavaScript libraries do I want to talk about? Well, these are a few of them. Uh, I've kind of put in a few extra ones as well. As I said, it is changing and moving a lot. I'm pretty sure there was something released like two weeks ago that I've tried to try and include in this talk because it was really, really cool. Um, so it might not have made it to this slide. Um, so there's tracking.js, which actually uh, doesn't help with all of the augmented reality, but it the most important part, the tracking. Um, and then you can use it in conjunction with things like 3.js, uh, which is not just kind of for models, but there's a whole game extension. There's 3x.webAR, um, which is an extension of 3.js for augmented reality. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think that has iOS support at the moment. Um, there's JS R Toolkit, which is awesome because it's a port of uh, a Flash AR toolkit, which is a port of Nya toolkit, which is Java, which is a port of AR toolkit. Yay, lots of ports. Um, they all made a lot of sense as to why they were ports, but it's just fun to say a port of a port of a port. Um, so AR toolkit, I actually really like as well. It's what I use for like apps when I'm doing native things. Um, and then there's also some other things like Nya toolkit you can kind of use with something else to make it more JavaScript-y as well. Um, there's also ord.js, uh, which is just a really nice API for doing augmented reality stuff as well. Um, there's also a bunch of other technologies that we have to use alongside these things. HTML5 is super great. Uh, OpenCV in Python you can use uh, along with 3.js to like get 3D objects into things. Uh, WebGL and WebRTC. Um, there's also some like browser, so augmented reality browsers. So it's like a browser you have to download, but then people can make stuff for it. Um, and and it's just, it just does AR, basically. And argon.js is used with an I, uh, the argon AR browser. Um, there's also lots of really important things in AR called uh, marker libraries. So if you're doing any marker tracking, those are really important. And there's JSAR UCO or JSR co, are you co? It's a problem with the internet. You're never quite sure how things are meant to be said. Um, and there's also a bunch of other kind of like more paid and premium platforms like Wikitude, which uses JavaScript for communication between uh, Xamarin and Architect, which is their AR thing, um, and Blip AR, which kind of has a core of JavaScript thing but helps you make uh, apps for iOS and Android. 
So there's like so much out there, right? Uh, I wasn't really sure where to begin when I started writing this talk. I was like, oh, this sounds really cool. I've done a bit of this. Oh my God, there's so much more about this that I don't know. Uh, this is going to be terrifying. Hopefully uh, you can all help me out afterwards and we can talk about all the different AI libraries maybe some of you have used. Uh, but that's not the important part. The important part is how. How do we do this? How do we actually get like a thing, look at a thing, and see a different thing on the screen? Um, it's an age-old question, I'm sure, for all of us. Uh, well, we can go back to this definition, and we can kind of juice. So you need a live or indirect feed. So you kind of need a camera. Um, you need the real-world environment. So that's where the camera input comes in. And then you need to be able to display the camera. Um, and you need to have something that you want to put on it. Uh, you need tracking to find out where you want to put that object on that feed, and you need a view that ties all of this together. Uh, so those are kind of like the four things that you need, broken down very simply, because there's, there's a bunch of stuff under each of them. Uh, but let's get started. Uh, so, camera. Yay! So there's this really handy thing that lots of people might already know about, and hopefully this is... I think this might be the deprecated version. I think there's another version. Uh, as we all know, things get deprecated all the time. Um, so yeah, you can just get your user's media. It's excellent. You kind of go and ask your user if you can use their camera. Hopefully, they say yes. Otherwise, nothing's going to work. Um, and then you have their camera. Woo, you can see things. Um, this is just one way to do it. There's some other ways you can do it. So I think you can do it with OpenCV, where it can read webcam streams. Uh, and there's like a capture thing where you capture the video. Uh, but yeah, this is so far the way that pretty much all the libraries I've looked at recommend doing it um, with like some slight adjustments to like where you're getting it. Um, so yeah, you can also capture sound. So you just go audio equals true, uh, audio true. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for the camera. That's the simple bit. That's the bit I love the most because it just gets done really easy. Uh, then you probably need a view, so you need to display what your camera is seeing. Um, this is uh, one way of doing it. So you can be like, yay, the user said I could use the camera. I can show off the camera. Excellent. Um, and you can use like HTML video tags or Canvas, um, or OpenCV does some other stuff where you can show it. Uh, but we're not going to go into that too much. So those are the two kind of easy bits. The next bits get slightly more complicated. Well, 3D objects, not too much. So these are the things you actually want to show in the reality that you're giving people. This is the augmented part. Um, and it doesn't have to actually just be 3D objects. I wrote this slide and then forgot to change it later. Um, so you can actually have sounds. So you could have like an augmented reality, which is kind of like a soundscape to reality, which I think is really cool, because 3D objects are really fun when you can see them, but otherwise, maybe not so much. Um, you can also have animations on the 3D objects and lots of things. And honestly, pretty much every library and tutorial I've ever gone through is always like, hey, have you checked out 3.js? So uh, go check out 3.js. It's pretty useful for this. Uh, I'm not actually a 3D modeler. Uh, I'm trying to get better at that. So I recommend going to 3.js and their examples. They're really amazing and they're so helpful <laughs> for like doing anything. Um, there's also WebGL and you can do fancy stuff with that. But hopefully you didn't come to this talk to learn 3D modeling, because I'm really sad to disappoint you. <laughs> so this is where all of the magic happens. Tracking, wow, it's a great word that encompasses so many different things. So there's lots of things you can track. So if I want to put an object into space, where do I want to put it, is basically uh, what tracking is saying. So there's augmented reality markers, uh, there's geo tracking, so you can have coordinates and you can like pin the thing to like those coordinates and be like, hey, this spot is where JSConf is. You should totally go there. Um, there's face tracking and color tracking. They're both kind of under the whole heading of object tracking. Uh, important to note, face tracking is not the same as facial recognition. You can go up to an AR thing. It's not going to know that it's you every time you go up. It just knows that you have a face, um, which is great. Hopefully, most of us have faces at the moment. Um, and yeah, they all use incredibly awesome algorithms. Some of them are really complicated. Um, some of them are like canny edge detectors uh, and like 
that help detect lots of different edges in the picture, which is really useful if you want to detect anything that's not like just a simple pattern AR marker, because you can detect circles and things, which is really exciting. Um, and there's there's just like a bunch of algorithms. If you're really into algorithms, I really recommend looking into these because they're really fun and uh, cool to look at. And you can try and make your own, which is really exciting. Um, so there's different forms of tracking. Market tracking is probably the most kind of solid tech in AR at the moment. It's, it's pretty well out there. We know how to make markers, and we know how to track them really well. There's a lot of libraries that do that super duper well. There's whole libraries of markers out there for you to use, so you don't even have to make your own. Um, and basically, you can make your own, because uh, I love making unique things. You just have to have a unique image from like all different perspectives. So from the bottom, it doesn't look the same as from the top or either of the sides. And that's pretty much what it takes to make an AR marker. So I'm pretty sure all of you could do that in like five seconds if you wanted to. Um, but it's not going to be very useful if you do right, right now. Um, so there's several libraries out there. So AR Toolkit has libraries of markers. Um, JS Co uh, also has libraries of markers. And you can use them with any of your projects. Um, this basically just uses pattern matching algorithms, and yeah, they're they're pretty solidly done at the moment. So that like if you really want a good applica AR application that's going to definitely work and it's not going to be like things flitting everywhere, uh, markers are the way to go. They might not be as super cool as like having nothing, but they definitely work. Um, some other tracking stuff. Well, uh, this is uh, that. 3x.ar thing I was kind of talking about earlier. Um, you, this is how you like kind of use it, basically. Uh, you get the source element, which is uh, like your camera, video, or canvas. Um, and then you tell it the threshold of what you want to track. And then you get another event to tell it what to do when that happens. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much all that does. <laughs> um, you can also do some other stuff with 3xar. Um, yeah, it has access to the library, and it also grabs your webcam for you, so super useful. Um, it handles all the video grabbing for you, um, and also gets all the positions in 3D if you want to put 3D objects over that. Uh, my favorite tracking library at the moment is actually tracking.js, huh. specifically designed to do tracking. Wow, they named it really well. I'm super glad. Um, so you may have gathered already, but, or not, but all this tracking kind of comes down to computer vision and what your computer can see. Um, and there are so many things that your computer can see if you can tell it what to see. So tracking.js handles a lot of that for you. They've, they've worked really hard on it, and it's, it's got a really nice, simple API. So you don't have to worry about all of the like, complicated algorithms they're using um, to do color tracking, object tracking, and they even have like a really nice thing to help you do custom tracking. Um, they have some really cool demos, and like people have made things, and I actually really wanted to show you one. So I'm going to see if I can do that, if it works. It wasn't working last night, but it worked this morning. No, go back. OK. So yes, this thing. Um, I don't know if it's working, because I can't see. Can I see? So if I have my face facing this, do I have fire on my head? No? Yes? Excellent. So you can actually like make gifts of yourself with fire on your head. It's super great. Um, <laughs> and you can do stupid things like this. And then hopefully you've, you've got a gif of you with fire on your head. So huh, super great um, thing you can do with AR today, right now. Um, <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so you can have fire. <laughs> um, I didn't actually make this, but it is an open source project. And you can go have a look at like all the back end of it. Um, and it's pretty much all JavaScript as well, which you might find interesting. Um, yeah, so that's, that's super cute. Um, yeah, if you want to do that right now in the, <laughs> in the audience, uh, send pictures, people with fire on your head. That's the um, link for that. Take a picture if you want to do it later. Um, or just come find me, and I'm happy to share that out with you. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's one of the uses uh, people have found for tracking.js. I assure you, there are like way more uses. They've actually got this really cute draw something, uh, which is 
It was kind of like a game that you played with your friends and you drew stuff. But this is just like a feed of whatever you want. And you can pick up objects and it has object tracking. So if I picked up this pen and told the API to like track this color blue, I could then use this to draw. So if I just wave it in the air in front of the webcam, it would then track that and draw. Draw something. Woo. Um, so that's something really cool you can do with AR that isn't just projecting something onto it. Um, you can actually interact with it, uh, which is what I'm all about, interacting. Um, and yeah, you can do face tracking, as we just saw. Um, color tracking, you can do even more like any kind of um, video. So it doesn't just have to be a webcam. You could just give it a video and be like, track all these different colors. Um, and you can also do that whole, hey, tagging people with faces. But you'll also need facial rec recognition to tag people properly. Um, so yeah, that's, that's one. Uh, library for tracking that I super recommend. Um, and its API is so simple that I haven't actually given you any code because code on slides is kind of annoying sometimes. And you can just go to the tracking.js website and they'll have tons for you there. Um, OpenCV also can work with uh, you know 3.js. Um, and so when that reads the webcam streams, it outputs coordinates. And you can use that to then um, get coordinates, put an object there, and then use JavaScript to actually display everything. Um, so that's another way to do it. Um, Or.js is really simple as well. Um, I think it's a paid service, though. Uh, though I think you can also find it all on GitHub, so I'm not quite sure how that works. Um, but yeah, this is, this is really simple. This is kind of simple APIs that they're putting out. Um, so you just have like a, a point of interest, and that's basically uh, where you're going to put the AR marker, uh, the AR projection, rather. And that's pretty much the two ways you do that. Well, the second one lists all your projections, but it's pretty much the same as the first one. Um, so yeah, that's just it just gives you a 3D scene. Uh, and into that scene, you put the points of interest. Uh, I'm not really quite, I haven't actually got to play with or.js a lot yet, but it seems kind of fun. Um, and, and relatively simple, but I feel like it doesn't let you do a lot beyond that, which is kind of what those things do. Uh, so I kind of recommend tracking.js more if you want to play with tracking and different algorithms for it. Um, I actually want to do a quick example of marker um, AR. So if any of you have smartphones, hand up if you have a smartphone. Ah, oh, there's a few of you. Excellent. Do you have a browser on your smartphone? Because if you go to this very safe URL, I'm sorry, <laughs> the actual one was way too long. I had to make it smaller. Um, please forgive me and please trust me. Uh, you can find me here in person if it goes wrong. But if you go to this, you might be able to see something uh, on this marker. So this is a good example of a very simple marker. Um, you can do more with markers. So you can have like uh, very complex paintings. So Picasso's paintings, super great as markers because they're not the same from like any direction. And you can do that with anything. So you can make a drawing. And as long as it's not the same from any direction, um, it can be a marker. So is, is it working for anyone? Yeah. So that's all on GitHub, on some really awesome AR people's GitHub. And you can see more examples of way cooler things. Um, so yeah, hopefully that gives you a, like a little bit of insight into what you can do with AR. Wouldn't it have been cool if this entire presentation had been AR based? You would have had to constantly be on your phone and not feel guilty for it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what you could do. Wouldn't that be great? I am really excited to see if you do that. Um, so those are all kind of individual components of, of using different JS libraries for the things. But what if you want to do it all in JS? Um, well, that's, that's really hard. You can just kind of, there's, there's a few things that say they can do that. Um, and they, they just basically get all the other libraries for you and do that. Um, and that, that's great. Um, so there's not really one library that will do it. Um, there is something called DWT that isn't strictly JavaScript, but apparently it, I haven't got to play with it yet, but apparently it transpiles your Java code into JavaScript. So it helps you use Java libraries and JavaScript libraries. Um, as far as I know, their augmented reality examples are a bit old though, but this is basically what they're doing that uh, hopefully we'll be able to understand now if we've learned stuff. So you've got the webcam, 
use WebRTC and like JavaScript things, yay. Uh, and then use Nyar Toolkit, which is actually a Java library for AR Toolkit. Um, but then you get to put that into WebGL, uh, which is JavaScript, and then it's in the browser. Yay! Super simple. See, you could. I'm expecting to see amazing augmented re applications from all of you by the end of today. It'll be great. <laughs> but hopefully, that's given you like a bit of a taster of some of the augmented reality libraries out there. There are literally so many more. Um, some of them are older than others, and there might be new ones coming out any day now. Like, I literally just woke up on Twitter like two weeks ago and was like, oh, another library, excellent. Um, <laughs> so that was the 3x.ar one, except they've got like a new one. Um, so yeah, what about the future? What, what other cool things uh, can we do with AR? Like, what are you going to do with AR now that you know that you can do it? Um, well, unfortunately, AR is a little bit in um, the trough of disillusionment. Uh, on the hype graph, uh, but that's okay because people like me are really excited about it and hopefully I'm helping make people like you excited about it. And that's really great because you're all people who can do something about it. Yay! Uh, and hopefully we'll, we'll go up a bit. Um, VR is actually a little further up the slough of enlightenment. I really love these names. <laughs> um, but it's, it's plateauing out and like having an actual defined thing. We'll see how long that lasts. Maybe, maybe we could overtake VR. That would be super cool. Um, and some other things. Ooh. So this is actually a sand pit. Oh, I'm really bad at moving my mouse. So this is a sand pit um, <laughs> when it gets to it. Um, and it's actually just got a projection over the top. And it's using um, depth sensors to, so that you can go in and move the sand around. And it changes the projection based on that. Um, and it's being used uh, in. It's, it's not being used for anything very useful right now. Well, it is. It's inspiring primary schoolers to study geography, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'm not finding anything. <sighs> Go to this thing. It's, it's really fun, and you can actually set them up yourselves like really easily. You can just like attach, if you, if you have money, you can set it up very easily. So you can attach like some connects because they've got great depth sensors, and like a projector, and that's, that's literally the entire thing. Um, so that's really cool. And hopefully you saw some of that. <laughs> I should probably, oh, no, come back. Yes. Um, this is some research going on in the Ishikawa uh, Watanabe uh, laboratory where they're doing dynamic image projection. So even on like moving and like transformable surfaces like this, you can actually, like it will move with them, so you can see that. It's really cool, and I'm really excited to see like what we can do with AR. So wouldn't it be great if I didn't have to decide what outfit I wanted to wear to like show you all this morning, and I could just wear like markers, and then you could just see my amazing outfit on your phones, and I wouldn't have to worry. It would be so good. My wardrobe would be so much smaller. And I think I'm going to have to wrap up. Uh, but this is a cool VR example of like stuff that you could do in AR. So that's one thing I forgot to mention. JavaScript is really great for prototyping things that you might want to put in AR. So 3.js is really good for that. If you're like, hey, I have this idea, but I don't know if I want to put it in AR yet. So I'm just going to put it all in this scene and see if it like might work. Uh, and JavaScript actually is how I prototype like all my AR things now. And it's super great. But the real message real is going to be this nice one. Intense. I really like AR, and I really hate that it keeps being used as gimmicks. So I'd really love it if when you make AR things, you don't make gimmicks. Please make meaningful things. This is my secret agenda with literally every AR talk I've ever presented. Um, hopefully the pictures of cats like really help you remember this slide. Cool. <laughs>